Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's take a breath together. I want to start with a quote from one of my favorite mentors, the Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman. In the stillness of the quiet, if we listen, we can hear the whisper of the heart giving strength to weakness, courage to fear, hope to despair. This month we're looking at this concept of the shadow. Um, and all week I have found myself noticing shadows in this physical realm and even sitting at my desk playing with flashlights and objects so that I could get a better understanding of how shadows actually function. Um, I remember a moment when I was in the Santa Rosa community. It was a Sunday evening and um, Reverend Dr. Melissa Felipe and her wife, Z. Egloff, were doing a Sunday evening service. And we were talking about this concept of shadows. And I had one of those, oh, where something so incredibly obvious finally comes to our awareness that shadows are simply blocked light. That, that's what creates a shadow is blocked light. And often I find in this human realm that our tendency is to focus on the shadow, to focus on the object. And what is missing in that is the solution. Because oftentimes we see the shadow as the problem. And we teach and hopefully embrace and move on to embody and make a way of life out of this teaching that all thought is manifested. All thought is manifested. Not just the ones we like, all thought. And perhaps rather than trying to avoid our shadow, we begin to understand this context of an inner and an outer. And that perhaps the shadow is simply a manifestation on the outer realm where we can actually see it and begin to get it, it, that that is a manifestation of what is going on with us in the inner realm, in our thoughts, in our beliefs. And that it's not the shadow that has to adjust. It is the light that we need to adjust. As I played with shadows this week, as I played with this week, the thoughts that came to me, and, and let me preface this with, I am not a scientist, I'm not a mathematician, and so this is what I imagine to be the case. It may or may not be 100% spot on, scientific fact. Um, I have been in caverns where there is a hundred percent absence of light. And in those moments, if you've ever been in one of those caverns, when they turn off all of the lights, there is no shadow. You literally can put your hand so close to your face that you touch your nose and see nothing. 
And so when I thought about that, it's like, okay, so the complete absence of light is one way to eliminate the shadow. <laughs> um, it's not one that I'm planning on choosing, but it is a way to eliminate the shadow is a complete absence of light. The other way that I'm imagining is to have an object in a room that is saturated with the exact same amount of light coming from every direction. Because even when I take, this has been my instrument, this tiny little flashlight. <laughs> and when I put an object underneath it and I turn the light on, I can change the shadow. And I'm doing this just so you can see, so you can play with this this week because I think it has value, right? And what I noticed was there was a point if the object was the same shape as my flashlight, there was a point of saturation. There was a point of alignment where the shadow went away. And what that sparked in me was this idea that when my inner is in perfect alignment with my outer, then I won't have a shadow side. Now, I am just going to go out on a limb and say, I'm not there yet. And, and for those of you who know me, you know I'm not there yet, right? And if you don't know that yet, spend 10, 15 minutes with me. It'll become really clear. I still have shadows. I still have places that I can align with the truth of my being because I am a human being, fully human, fully spiritual. I am simultaneously, as are you, we are simultaneously the light and the object that blocks the light. And this, I think, is the most beautiful, complex, mind-bending reality of what we teach, that we truly are the both and, that we are 100% light, and we block the very light that we are. And so I want to take this idea of manifestation. All thought is manifest in this reality. And I want to take it to this truth of oneness that we teach. And so if in that room, when I'm moving the light, the shadows change from different directions, perhaps this is how we help each other heal. That sometimes you shine the light on thoughts that I'm unaware of block my light. And sometimes I shine light on thoughts that block your experience of light. That sometimes the most effective way of healing this shadow side is by allowing someone else's light in to our room that this idea of separation ultimately, that ultimately the idea of separation, and I say idea because it is not a reality. There is nothing real about separation. It's made up. It's completely made up. And we get to unmake it up. We get to shine light on the lie of separation and begin to understand that every body, everything is light. 
And if we will allow someone else's light to illuminate our path and join us in healing shadows, we might just get there as a human race. And that takes me to this idea of relationship. In my studies in ministerial school, I came across a history of new thought. And if you're interested in it, you can get it on Google Books. It's completely free. And in the beginning of that, in the, in the preface of that, the introduction, Horatio Willis Dresser, and I believe it was in 1911, states, the only, we now see that the only brute justice must be social. And he goes on to talk about relationships. Earlier this week, a member of our community sent me this beautiful article about why we keep cycling through this process of becoming awakened to the shadows of racism that exist in our country in our humanity, and yet it only seems to last for a while. And as I read that in the context of our um, topic this month, I began to understand what the author was saying that in terms of this lightness, that what the author was presenting was that we don't heal because we stop at information and what is going to heal us is relationship is contact with one another is sustained relationships that are based on just experiencing one another for a common cause that has nothing to do with specifically healing whatever ism but is about connection. It is about, and, and so when I think about that in terms of the light, it's about increasing the light. It is about illuminating one another's paths, which is just one path, and we're all experiencing it differently. And so if we come, if we understand how light relates to the object, then we begin to empower ourselves to shift and we can choose, and we do choose, we can shift the object, or we can shift the light. And the more light we bring in, the less shadow exists. And then it's not about shifting the object. Then we stop othering. We stop othering people. We stop othering animals. We stop othering concepts because the more light we bring in, the more illuminated everything becomes. And the whole concept of othering literally goes away because othering is the shadow of separation. And what if we really live into the inner light so completely that the inner literally becomes the outer? And we illuminate life to such a degree that there are no more shadows. We have that power. I know we do. We have it at the spiritual level. And yes, beloveds, our brain is going to argue that we have that power. And if you're like most human beings, we instantly begin to look for those others that are evidence of the inability to change. And we assign all kinds of judgments. That, beloved, is your manifestation of your inner block that is screaming for illumination. And so, like I teach always, 
we have to start with ourselves. And so as we progress through this month, we're going to look at our shadows. We're going to embrace our shadows. We are going to dance with our shadows. We are going to make friends with them and understand some tools on how to easily, effortlessly bring our whole selves into alignment through relationship. Shadows are created by how light relates to objects, how objects relate to light. And so I invite you over the next week to become open. How are you relating? When we hear, and we've heard it a lot this week, of these repetitive mass shootings, is your first response light or shadow? You get to choose. I invite you, whichever way it first shows up, to find your way to more light. Whether it's through affirmations, whether it's through reading, whether it's through meditation, whether it is through standing out in the middle of a field and screaming until you get it all out to find the light that is you. There is no one size fits all. This month, we're going to explore how we each relate to light, to darkness, to object, to thought. And my hope is at the end of the month, we each have a much greater understanding that not only am I the light, so are you, no matter what. Let's take this into prayer. And so I know, I know in this moment, as I know in every moment, that there is one infinite something that is everything. One light that manifests, that produces itself in a multiplicity of objects, fully infused with the light that it is, and left to discover that for ourselves. And so we often show up as objects that block the very light that we are, which in no way changes, we are light. We are the infinite in form, fully spiritual, fully divine, fully human. This is the truth of our being. And so I speak my word claiming and affirming that we lean into the both and, that we are awakening to the magnificence of our being, that we celebrate the life that we are bringing our light and our physical form into alignment. That we love every moment, that we love every shadow, that we stand squarely, firmly, unmoved in the truth of oneness, that there is no other, that every shadow I see is my shadow, that every light I see is my light, because there is only one. And as that one awakens within each individualized expression of itself, the whole is illuminated. 
grateful. Grateful to know that law works every time a demand is placed in it. And so I place this demand squarely in law, claiming and affirming that it's already done. And knowing it's done, I look for the evidence of it in this physical realm. It is done. It is complete. It can be no other way. Hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so it is.